What is time? To fully understand, we have to go back to the very beginning. More, more, no, no. We have to go back 13.8 billion years. Here, an infinite expanse of darkness. The void stretching endlessly in every direction. The universe as we know it does not exist. There's no time, no space, just an abyss of potential energy compressed into an infinitely small point. No one knows quite how or why it happened, but at that moment, the so-called fabric of space and time was created. Of course, this begs the question, were multiple timelines created or just one? We don't really know, but in our timeline, humans began to create tools and inventions like the wheel. We even figured out how to tame fire. But eventually, as the sun rose and set every day, we decided that time was something worth keeping track of. But how did that start? I mean, we had to start keeping track of time somewhere, right? I could just tell you, but that would be boring. So instead, I'll show you using this time tram that defies time itself. Let's go. To understand the history of timekeeping, we have to go back to a civilization carved out of the sand. They even built massive structures in the shape of pyramids that were over 450 feet tall. Welcome to Ancient Egypt. The year is 2600 BC, so some of the famous pyramids are still relatively new at this point. However, the locals had been keeping track of time using a simple but genius tool that required no force and no electricity. This is the shadow clock. So how did they use shadows to tell the time? Well, at first they built 10 foot vertical rods that would come up out of the ground called obelisks. They would then cast shadows onto the ground with markings for each hour. There were normally 12 markings for the 12 hours in a day. But as time went on and obelisks were built more and more, it was decided that this just wasn't enough. Eventually the obelisks were built at 100 feet. The ancient Egyptians definitely did innovate with their shadow clock, but I wouldn't quite call it the pinnacle of ancient timekeeping. For that, we have to go to a different ancient civilization. Welcome to Athens, Greece. This is a sundial, similar to a shadow clock, but a little bit more advanced. Instead of a perfectly vertical rod, Greek sundials had this special piece called a gnomon. It allowed the sundial to be perfectly circular and made timekeeping much more accurate compared to the massive Egyptian monoliths used a thousand years prior. And it's super cool because if you look at it from above, it's suddenly super clear where the shape of today's clocks come from. In ancient Greece, this was the way to know what time it is. The invention of the sundial was super genius, but it wasn't the most advanced way to tell time in ancient Greece. Check this out. This is the Tower of the Winds, the craziest, most technologically advanced timekeeping device of its time. It even had something called a water clock on the inside, making sure that time could always be kept track of, even in the darkest hour. Metal rods were embedded into the outer walls, serving as shadow clocks, and they used multiple, each one for a different part of the year, making sure that each reading was just as accurate as the last. In the over 2,000 years since the Tower of the Winds was built, we've managed to use pendulums, atom vibrations, and even satellites to measure time more precisely than ever before. But why does it need to be so accurate? Timekeeping is what keeps everything running smoothly. GPS on your phone, global financial systems, everything. For example, GPS satellites orbiting Earth transmit time signals down to receivers on the ground. These signals are so precise that even a tiny discrepancy, say a fraction of a millisecond, could mean that your location on a map is off by a few meters. But with billions of devices on Earth, how do we make sure that all the clocks stay in sync? Well, that's where atomic clocks come in. 
and a global network of timekeeping. Atomic clocks are the gold standard for accuracy, measuring time by counting the oscillations of atoms like cesium or rubidium. They're so precise that over the span of 100 million years, an atomic clock would only be offset by a second. Organizations like the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, or BIPM, take data from atomic clocks around the world to create a single time standard called Coordinated Universal Time, which you might know as a UTC. From there, devices sync up using Network Time Protocol, or NTP. This protocol is like a timekeeping messenger for the internet, transmitting UTC to servers and computers. It allows your phone to know what time it is, even when you're halfway across the world. But what happens if my device loses power? Like if my phone dies and I charge it back up the next day, why isn't the time and date a day behind? That's thanks to this little component called the RTC, or real-time clock. An RTC consists of a quartz crystal oscillator, which vibrates at a precise frequency when voltage is applied to generate time signals, an integrated circuit to track time and manage calendar variations, and a battery backup to maintain functionality when the main power is off. Even when your device is dead, the RTC keeps ticking, maintaining an accurate count of time. When you power the device back on, it reads from the RTC to reset the clock to the correct time. On Earth, time moves in a linear fashion. At least that's how it seems. But as we move further and faster into space, some interesting things start to happen. So let's see what happens to a clock as we approach light speed. From my perspective, the clock stays ticking at the exact same speed, but that's only because I am moving with it. But for someone who's not on this magical time tram, this clock would tick increasingly slower as we approach the speed of light. And it's not just speed. The strength of a gravitational field can also dictate how fast that clock would tick from the perspective of someone outside that field. Remember those satellites I talked about? The ones that help pinpoint your location and require extremely precise time? Well, those are so far away from Earth's gravitational center that their time passes at a different rate from our perspective. So, the timekeeping devices on those satellites are actually tuned to tick a tiny bit faster to maintain that perfect time standard. Pretty incredible. And if you were near something with a strong gravitational pull, like a planet or black hole, the time of someone further from that force than you would move faster from your perspective, effectively skipping time. That was probably one of my favorite videos, if not just things that I've ever made. So if you enjoyed it as much as I did making it, then maybe you could go down and leave a like or maybe even subscribe to help me keep making videos this good and even better. And if you wanna see another video of mine, YouTube thinks you'll like this one. So it'll be sitting there for you if you wanna watch. It just, it was, it was born to be clicked.